Hello, you're watching Sideline. Today, our guest is Ms. Hsieh-Jargal Inkbayer, Secretary General of the United Nations Association of Mongolia. Hsieh-Jargal, thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much for having me. So it's a pleasure for us. And the World Federation of United Nations Associations is a non-profit organization which operates in more than 100 countries over the world. And the Mongolian branch has just recently launched. And could you tell us what your organization is and what main objectives you have? Sure. So the United Nations Association of Mongolia was recently established and um, as you rightly stated, we are a member organization of the World Federation of United Nations Associations, uh, which operates in more than 100 countries. So mm -hmm. this essentially makes us part of a very large global network and our main ob objective is to uh, support the work of the United Nations. So in that sense, um, UNA Mongolia has uh, defined its objective as filling the opportunity gap in Mongolia through um, implementing innovative projects that promote mm -hmm. sustainable development. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we have uh, created um, five priority er areas for our organization. So one is global citizenship education, sustainable economic development, um, disaster risk reduction and, and environment, uh, peace uh, and security, mm -hmm. as well as health and social policy. So we, uh, within these five areas um, and themes, we hope to um, implement uh, many uh, innovative projects in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what was it like to launch the branch uh, United Nations Mongolia? So how, how long did you work to establish the United Nations of Mongolia in Mongolia? Um, so our process started in uh, September 2019 and mm -hmm. we formally launched um, September this year. So it took uh -huh. us two whole years to actually um, establish organization. Um, this is uh, the reason for it is because our World Federation has um, some stringent uh, requirements, well, um, hard requirements for um, its member organizations. So in that sense, we had to uh, fulfill all of its requirements in order to establish its Mongolian branch. Mm -hmm. um, we also had to um, get the um, approval as well as the support of the United Nations in Mongolia, uh -huh. as well as um, uh, support from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here. So it's been a very interesting and challenging two-year process, but we hope that through the establishment of our organization, many people in Mongolia, as well as across the world, um, will have the opportunity to participate in the United Nations programs, as well as participate in actively taking part mm -hmm. um, in SDGs. Mm -hmm, of course. So could you tell us how many members or also the broad members <clears throat> do you have at the United Nations Association of Mongolia? And uh, when you recruit new members, what were the general uh, requirements? So uh, we have seven founding members who also serve as the board members of UNA Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And um, we have just recently recruited 20 new members. Mm -hmm. um, so our general, general requirement is for people to be 18 years and older. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any limitations in terms of physical space and location. So you could be in another country and in another province and mm -hmm. you, you, you can still be part of UNA Mongolia. So in that sense, Sense. Our uh, most recent recruitment has um, four people who are outside of um, Ulaanbaatar. So uh -huh. one of them is in Qawalta uh, province, um, Husqvarl, uh, Ofs provinces, and uh, another member is in Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And one of our board members currently lives in the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, in the current climate of global cooperation, the importance of the NGOs and individuals uh, has grown significantly. So how do you think uh, United Nations associations will contribute to solving these global issues? Of course. So SDG 17, Partnership for Sustainable Development Goals, is my favorite goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in that sense, I have been uh, working with lots of NGOs for the past um, six years um, in order to establish uh, strong partnerships so that we can have uh, stronger influence as well as impact in the development uh, and uh, the uh, implementation of the SDGs. UNA Mongolia is part of a global network um, mm -hmm. of more than 100 UNAs across the globe. So in that sense, we facilitate um, knowledge exchange with all these um, UNAs across the world. Mm -hmm. Because UNAs are not um, mostly not restricted in age, there are lots of um, different and rich experiences that members bring to their organizations. So we are able to learn from all these organizations in, in Albania, Germany, US and Canada, 
Canada, for example. So in that sense, um, we hope to really become a model NGO that is, is, has the essence um, of you know, creating this global and local connection uh, between Mongolia and the rest of the world. Um, one of our programs that we're currently uh, developing is called the UN Youth Delegate Program. Mm -hmm. So um, we also see this program as an opportunity for Mongolian youth to have their say in at the um, global decision-making levels. So we are hoping to include a Mongolian youth delegation as part of the official um, state delegation to the United Nations General Assembly, hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. It's very nice to hear. And one of the main goals of you, United Nations associations is to boost the implementations of the United Nations, as you said, and uh, the, the United Nations Sustainable uh, Development Goals. And how would you assess the current implementation of the SDGs globally and also in Mongolia? So Mongolia um, launched the uh, voluntary national uh, review of the SDGs in 2019, and mm -hmm. one of the um, key issues um, that the report saw in, as a hindrance to Mongolia's development was the rising inequality. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, um, UNA Mongolia uh, made it its mission to uh, fill the opportunity gap. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that as our contribution to um, this rising inequality because we see that um, leaving no one behind as well as providing um, equitable um, opportunity for development, uh, whether it be personal or national, to different levels of stakeholders as well as individual members of society is very crucial in, in order to um, achieve um, UN's goals, for example. And um, the UN um, announced the decade of action in 2020. So mm -hmm. this uh, means that we have, uh, we need to move forward from raising awareness about SDGs to actually taking um, action in the national and local stages. So we see ourselves as the main, um, mechan well, not the main, but one of the um, opportunities and platforms for this um, action to take place uh, locally, which mm. means locally and globally. Uh, okay, <laughs> globally. Okay, so, uh, so you are focusing on uh, filling the opportunity gap. So, which uh, means also the educational gap. And the SDG 4 is the education goal, uh, which aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education for everyone. And uh, one of the latest UNA uh, Mongolia projects was the introduction to global citizenship education to, for Mongolian educators. And can you elaborate on the project and how many educators were involved in the project? Right, so in order to talk about this project, we do have to start a little bit uh, far back from mm -hmm. the um, creation of the World Federation of United Nations Associations, or as we call it, Wufuna, right? Okay. So uh, Wufuna was created in uh, 1946, so mm -hmm. 75 years ago. It's just one year later uh, than the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And um, with its creation, it set um, one of it as as one of its main goals to be global citizenship education. So in that sense, um, one of our priorities is GCED, which um, aims to develop um, citizens to have more action, to more, have more knowledge and action towards um, creating a more peaceful and sustainable world. So in that sense, we hope to um, disseminate this knowledge of GC uh, global citizenship um, through the teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, global citizenship education is part of SDG 4.7, so in that sense it is very much um, taking local action towards um, the SDG implementation. So with the support of UNESCO OPSIU, which is the Asia Pacific Center for um, Education for International Understanding, uh, mm -hmm. based in Seoul, Korea, um, so they're um, in charge of um, promoting GCED across um, across the world, basically. So, with their support, we created this project for uh, teachers, uh, secondary school teachers in Mongolia, for, to uh, educate them about GCED and hopefully to implement them in their, into their curriculum. So, we were able to bring in. Um, um, more, uh, about 30 teachers from across Mongolia. Mm -hmm. um, more than five of them were from uh, different provinces, including like Bayinghongar, etc. So um, to take part in a two-week um, online, um, online uh, education, um, as well as uh, one-time in-person training. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the online component consisted of like GCD theory as well as example example curricula that they could implement in their classrooms, and we saw that you know teachers um, across the across the nation in Selang and and in Bayahongar were already implementing our curric our uh, example curriculums in their classrooms, mm -hmm. and the in person training included um, teaching methodology to successfully um, implement GCD in their classrooms. So um, we just finished this project and we see this as hopefully an annual project that we can undertake um, in the future because we uh, believe that teacher education is um, very crucial in filling this opportunity gap in education. Mm -hmm, certainly. So in order to teach the subject of global education, uh, and like, should it be just a homeroom teacher or should it be like a specialized uh, global citizenship teacher? The beauty of uh, global citizenship education is that it can be undertaken by anyone, anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be just in high schools, in, uh, in educational institutions, or um, even um, at home, actually. So in that sense, I think raising more awareness about GCD and its uh, various um, applications is very important um, in promoting GCD in the future. Um, for teachers, they really expressed their wish to have it uh, to have the ability to um, teach other teachers uh, about uh -huh. GCD. So, in that sense, um, we we hope to be able to support them in their endeavors. Um, GCD teaches um, sustainable development, human rights, um, justice and peace in society, climate change, and everything that a person, um, regardless of their age, really needs to know in order to feel like part of the global community and to take action and also to change their uh, behavior so that they, they could, through their um, actions and behavior, contribute to sustainable development. So in that sense, it's very important to have a very strategic and possibly a programmatic approach to um, enabling uh, GCD implementation across the nation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, generally how would you evaluate the current education policies in Mongolia and uh, are, are you also planning to uh, conduct other educational projects? Of course. Well, that's a very um, large question. <laughs> um, so for the past uh, year or so, I've actually been working with uh, teachers uh, within uh, the United Nations Association as well as um, outside of it. And we see that um, I personally think that um, teacher development is something that has been really left out from uh, educational policies and programming. And mm -hmm. this is something that we're also really looking for um, to uh, tackle. Mm -hmm. um, so. In that sense, we hope to continue implementing lots of different programs, bringing in international programs and localizing them in Mongolia as we wait for the educational reform policies to take shape and to come into effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So the next question is, for the opening of United Nations Association of Mongolia, you mentioned a project called uh, Digital Creative Hub. So could you elaborate on the project? So what is Digital Creative Hub? So the creative industry is one of the industries that brings in um, the most uh, uh, employment to young people as well as to women and it's uh, projected to have um, about almost 10% of global GDP in the future. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important industry um, to be um, paying attention to. Uh -huh. So we saw that um, the local action for this could be the creation of a digital creative hub. So this is, in a very simple sense, it's a, it's a website that connects creative industry professionals to opportunities um, uh, for collaboration as well as for learning, training, and for uh, grants um, across the globe. Because a lot of creative industry professionals um, Ha lack uh, the necessary uh, skills and um, perhaps language abilities to access these types of international opportunities. We hope to be that, um, fill that gap mm -hmm. and be that bridge uh, for them to uh, really improve their skills and also um, access uh, international grants and opportunities. So we are currently developing this, um, the concept for this website as well as this network that we're hope to build. Um, this is, and we. Uh, took part in a, a global competition um, to present our ideas and it was one of the finalists for the UNESCO Technology and Culture um, Competition Among Young People. Um, so we uh, are also looking uh, for further partners for us to collaborate with in this project with, so please let us know if uh, anybody is interested. Uh -huh. So you say you're going to launch a website on this, so what will the what website's name? 
Um, so we currently actually haven't decided yet. Uh -huh. So uh, because uh, the concept is there, but we haven't uh, really gotten to the, uh, as we say, nitty gritty of it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you can look forward to it on perhaps our Facebook page as we announce it. Mm -hmm. United Nations Association of Mongolia Facebook page. Exactly. Uh -huh. So could you tell us what other notable projects you're planning to uh, launch, especially in the first year of your establishment? So, um, as you know, this week is the U United Nations Week, and this year is the 60th anniversary of Mongolia's membership to the UN. So we are planning um, a joint project with the UN Volunteer Program, in which we um, give information about volunteer opportunities to the United Nations, to the Mongolian population, in collaboration with the United Nations Volunteer Office in Bangkok. Um, so uh, it will be held in November. The exact date is to be uh, determined. Uh, another program uh, that we're currently working on is the Junior Ranger program, which is uh, which aims to give environmental education and skills to um, young uh, students and young adults in Bainzurk district. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, implemented with support uh, of Australian awards, a DAP program, and uh, implemented in conjunction with the National Garden Park um, in Ulaanbaatar. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> ah. Yes, yeah, so... Um, also, we are hoping to um, launch the UN SDG Awards, uh -huh. so for the public sectors, to, in order to um, recognize public sector achievement towards um, re um, and their uh, actions towards the SDGs. Uh -huh. About the SDGs, uh, apart from the ones that we've talked about, what other uh, SDGs should we be focused on in order to make sure that they are being implemented properly? Um, I think each and every SDG is very important, um, perhaps talking about it more in terms of uh, partnerships and engagement of CSOs, civil society organizations and NGOs, into the um, SDG uh, implementation and monitoring process is a very important issue to tackle mm -hmm. um, because um, a lot of the times uh, there are only like a few NGOs who are very active and uh, we fail to reach out to the most uh, diverse ones or the ones who um, don't have the necessary skills yet. So in that sense, UNA Mongolia hopes to become a model NGO um, mm -hmm. so that we are able to help um, facilitate um, this dialogue as well as to um, really exemplify the actions that NGOs can take in terms of um, uh, implementation of the SDGs. Uh, we also really... Um, rely on our members actually to uh -huh. come up with their own innovative and creative ideas to give them a sense of agency in um, taking action for the SDGs. So it's very much up to the members on uh, to decide on which SDG they want to focus on as well. So we um, focus a lot on training our members so that then they can be um, have the necessary skills and knowledge to really have meaningful uh, action and participation in this whole process. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So you have got 20 members and seven uh, board members, including you. And, and you are going to uh, do lots of things. But are you planning to be also like open to non-members? Would you conduct an like, meet, open meeting for everyone and take their uh, voices and ideas? Uh, what's your plan on that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great uh, question. Um, so, for example, UNA Albania have offers, organizes coffee chats um, mm -hmm. every month, and that's their signature project. So oh, what okay. they do is they uh, bring in the general population, and then they really talk about different subjects um, through every meeting, and then they uh, take in um, people's opinions and ideas, and then uh, digest them, and then send them to the UN, for example. So in that sense, we are very uh, flexible towards what we can do um, in terms of our projects and activities. So we're very much open to any suggestions, ideas and partnerships um, from individuals and organizations alike. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Shicharat, for coming to our studio and talking and introducing about your wonderful organization, United Nations Association of Mongolia. And we wish you lots of luck in implementing all your objectives in the future. Well, thank you so much. And we um, hope uh, everyone can join us in the future, whether it be through our membership mm -hmm. or through our uh, various programs uh, for the general population. And we're very much looking forward to hearing from everyone about their um, initiatives and ideas as well. You've watched Sideline. Our guest today was Ms. Shikharat Inkhoir, Secretary General of the United Nations Association of Mongolia. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>